this live workout, you're gonna discover how to use Indian clubs or Indian swinging clubs for beginners. You're gonna have a pair here. This is a two pound pair. You can get two of these, two sets. That's what I did when I bought my first pair from Amazon and you get a one pound and a two pound. Always start as light as you can. In fact, before I even bought my first pair, I started with a pair of sticks, which was really a broom stick with the broom cut off and I cut it in half and that was the perfect length. Once you are ready and you have a pair, and again, you can use sticks if you want, you're gonna hold here at the bottom. If you have this knob, your pinky goes through the middle of that knob. You're gonna close your hands. Don't squeeze them. Just hold them firmly and relaxed. Let them drop and bring them back. This is your warm up move with Indian swinging clubs. This is gonna get you stronger, better grip, especially if you do martial arts. And you don't have to do martial arts to swing your Indian clubs. It's gonna lean you out build some power, strength. It's good for your shoulders. I call these an insurance policy for my shoulders because it keeps them strong and healthy. Nothing has worked as best or as good as these do for my shoulders. So you swing them. You're going to start to add a little of a dip with your knees, a little bend, kind of a squatting motion. Make sure your hips are back behind your knees. And this is just to get the blood flowing, get your heart rate up a little bit. This is gonna be both a strengthening exercise and an exercise that leans you out faster. That means you're burning fat. So you're bringing this up, dip a little bit, start with 30 seconds just swinging, and then add another 30 seconds with this dipping motion. And now you're ready to split your swing. You're gonna do a lot with both Indian clubs at once. And this is gonna help you get there faster, how to master both clubs moving at the same time is this third warm-up move right here just splitting them and then when you're ready after 30 seconds here slowly take a step and then step in don't worry which hand which foot you're not going to overthink it don't overcomplicate it just a little lunge not very deep not very long just a tiny little bend both knees one foot comes forward step together step in with the other one and your heart rate now is going up even higher meaning you're gonna break a sweat sooner you're gonna get into that fat burning zone faster with Indian swinging clubs now your body should be warmed up you're gonna do the first motion first exercise with the clubs it's called a mill so you're gonna start here notice with my hand palm facing back away from me it's gonna dip down and come up here so that your knuckles are going to be parallel to the sky or the floor. However you want to think about it, your thumb is in, in and down. Again, your pinky's here, kind of cutting that ball in the middle. If you need to, you can choke up from the start. Eventually, you're going to be down here, though. And then this is parallel. All this is parallel with the ground. This is wrong. This is correct. So you want to be here and your arm is cutting your body just in the middle. Swing it back out, swing it in, out. You're gonna start with just one hand. I don't care which one, you only have two. You're gonna do them both the same amount. You're gonna to start to become more ambidextrous, more even. I'm trying not to line that up with that big, big bag back there. So you can see that it's just palm down or palm facing away and that this comes straight to the ground. 30 seconds here, and then the other hand. Again, think of like hitching a ride. This goes to the side, your hand is closed. Swing it back out, palm facing away from you. That's straight down, in and out. This is a great way to build strength in your arms for your guard. If you do a striking martial art, it's good to build uh, strength in your wrists. So you don't roll your wrists when you're punching if you strike. If you grapple, this is amazing because your grip strength improves every session, every workout with Indian swinging clubs, you're getting a stronger, healthier grip. Your grip gets so strong for grappling, like judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, Western wrestling, you get strong enough, it's it's a huge advantage to you when you wrestle somebody. If you're just as strong everywhere else, but you have a stronger grip, I guarantee you'll win. Unless they have some, you know, like special technique or something. They've been training longer. Maybe they know more techniques. 
But let's say everything else is even. The guy with a stronger grip or the girl with a stronger grip is going to win. 30 seconds here. Go back to the first one. From here, open the elbow. Now, when you open your elbow, you're, just, you're simply just pulling it out. Let me show you from here. This is all you're doing. You're just opening it up. Notice that puts it behind my head. I've never hit myself in the head. You're not going to hit yourself either. From here, from here, open. One, two, and then you're going to throw it and drop it. Comes here, open, throw it. Of course, don't let it go when you throw it. Think of casting a fishing pole with the same motion as a throwing knife. I got the throwing knives out. I've been training, I've been practicing. I wanna make sure I can hit the target consistently before I show you that workout. Good, awesome. I'll bet you're stronger than ever too, John. From here, here, and throw them. One, two, three. 30 seconds with one hand. I want you to try to put your heels together, turn the balls of the feet out, right? Squeeze everything here so it stabilizes as you do this motion today. Normally, I don't say much about your footing or your stance. Good. But today, especially for John, I want John to level up. John, I want you to start burning more fat. And I don't know, you might not need it. I do. And if you do, you're gonna get there by isolating those feet, get them together, squeeze everything, stomach up and in, abs tight. And you're gonna move faster and faster. Now back to the first motion, I'm gonna do sets of these. This is for you to get leaner faster, to get stronger, to get, yeah, perfect. You're gonna swing it, drop, your feet are just slightly apart, about as wide as the inside of your arms or your shoulders, which means the outside edge of your foot is in line with your armpit. About that wide with a little squat, hips behind the knees, 30 seconds. Then 30 seconds, one hand going through your mill. One, two, cast. One, two, three picking up speed and power. As you squeeze the abs and you put your heels together and the balls of your feet go out like a duck and you increase your speed, being sure that you're opening and that this comes behind your head right before you put it out. Most of the times when I'm teaching somebody, I see this and they start going faster like this and, and it feels like it's right, but this is not right and it puts too much pressure on the outside of the shoulder. You want to be here, here, three parts. One, two, three. One, two, and that becomes smooth. Smooth becomes fast. 30 seconds there, back to another set. You're going to start to do 30 seconds with this swinging. Let it go deeper. Let it go back farther so it looks like this. Coming back. And just a little squat. I want you to use that to really get the heart rate up, really build power in the legs. When you start to defend yourself, whether it's for fun, because you just love martial arts, or you really need it to defend yourself, street fight self-defense, you want to make sure that you have the power to fight, that you're fit to fight. And the biggest part of that is going to be your legs. You have to have good footing. This is going to help you with good footing. But you also want to know you have that knockout power in your punch and your kick. And all that is gonna come through your legs. Not sure if this will answer the question or not. If not, ask me again. It's just, it's the same grip as before. And what I said from the beginning is that if they're too heavy, choke up a little bit, move down here. If you're ready to move up and wait, you can get a pair from below. There's a link to Amazon where they sell them or just simply wrap some duct tape, some Gorilla tape, put some rocks on there or some of those uh, lead weights like you get when you fish, fishing weights. You smash them, when we were kids, we would you know, smash them, put them on the line, smash those down as long as you don't breathe it in, right? It's, you're probably too old to get uh, lead poisoning anyway. But you put the weights on there, that way you know how much they weigh. You put a little bit at a time, tape them on, they get heavier and heavier. You have two pounds, three pounds, five pounds. Let me grab a heavier set to show you the ne next exercise. Now, 
Now these, uh, upside down, they're that Onnit brand. I don't know if you've seen Onnit with Joe Rogan or whatever, but these Onnit brand, these are five pounds. You can see it's not as long, it's not as deep or uh, thick, but that's because it's metal. The other ones are like a hard plastic. So from here, I'm gonna do another set. I immediately feel in my legs and when I swing that my muscles are uh, doing more work. So I know I'm gonna get a better workout. I'm getting stronger. I'm gonna get a harder punch, faster punch, a better guard. And you can do this too. You can practice turning. You can practice punching straight. You can practice your elbows. You can practice blocking your head. And practice bringing your elbows through all while you're holding you want a good cardio workout you run punching the whole time with these clubs in your hand and then go back to this but then add the other one bring the heels together stomach up and in as soon as one hits the front the other one's coming up you're alternating now I'm gonna do 30 seconds here. After 30 seconds here, go back to that split and add that step lunge. So you're stepping and working a different part of the body, really getting those heart rate up. The step lunge is gonna get your heart rate higher than just swinging with that little squat. So this gets your heart rate higher, gonna break the sweat deeper. You're gonna lean out faster, you're gonna become fighting fit, able to defend yourself, and then go back to another set, alternating. And the key is always this, to this, to this. And I stress this a lot because almost always I see as you're getting better, you're doing this when you're slow, and then gradually, it starts to go faster, and then you're into something like this, and this is wrong. You've gotta be here, here, and here. From here to here, and here, here, and here. Now, I want you to go here and add a turning motion. Turning like this. What you're doing is you're dropping them forward, palms to the sky, they come behind you and forward. And these are the five pound Indian clubs. You can see how that really starts to work. My muscles in the forearm, the tendons, stretches them all out. You're gonna go forward for about 30 seconds and then reverse 30 seconds. Oh, amazing for sword. You wanna be able to, I didn't mention it before, John, but thanks for bringing it up. You wanna be better at martial arts, weapons, bow staff, sword, collie sticks, Harder, faster strikes, less chance that you're gonna lose your weapon because your hands become so much stronger. It's this thing right here, the Indian swinging clubs. I want you to go forward 30 seconds and then just pull it back and reverse it, right? And then come back here, drop it, bring it up. When you're ready, add that turning motion and then turn it out and bring it back up. So you're turning and back and up, down and up. So now your whole body is getting a workout from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, but especially your grip, especially your arms, your shoulders. And like I said before, you really wanna get your heart rate up, run and punch, start getting these hands out. This is from a company called Onnit, and they make a lot of mushroom powders for uh, uh, what do they call them? Nootropics. Actually, I like a lot of the products because they, they have a lot of stuff. It's, uh, is it Aubrey Marcus? No, that's the, the gross coffee guy. I only say gross because I don't like drinking butter in my coffee, but some people love it. Uh, Bulletproof. But it's from that same uh, group of people, right? Not that they're all businessly, business aligned. Um, but you hear Joe Rogan does them. They make a really cool looking kettlebell that's the head of a gorilla or something. But these are just metal on it, five pounds. Yeah, but you, you absolutely don't need these. The ones that I sent to you, 90% of all my workouts I do with these. 
These are the two pounds. These and the one pound that John has. I can't remember if I sent you one pound or two. I think it was one pounds, right? And they're like this, but just a little bit smaller. The link's below. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. So from here, and the, the reason this is so effective is because you pull your heels together, you squeeze everything tight, you get better prop posture, better technique, and then slowly you become smoother, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, you go faster, and you're getting a good workout because you have time under tension. It's just like in the old days, you, people thought you had to get heavier, 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 but with smaller muscle groups, especially arms and shoulders, you don't need heavy, you need longer time under tension. And these, because they can do so much, yeah, they sell the mushrooms for the, um, you know, there are all kinds of mushrooms that are good for your digestion and good for your blood, supposedly, I don't know. Um, but yeah, on it, they have a lot of different products. They sell stuff to help your memory, the nootropics, and then they have, I don't know what all they have. I don't, uh, I find them kind of pricey. The only reason I have their Indian swinging clubs is because at the time I couldn't find anything heavier and they had free shipping one weekend. So I bought two pairs. Let me show you the other pair. These beasts. Now, by no means are these the heaviest Indian clubs you can get. But when you start to get heavier and heavier Indian clubs, the exercises change. You're no longer doing one, two, one, two. You'll start to do the same thing you might with like a mace or a kettlebell. You can focus on, and 10 pounds for me, because I've done it for a long time, I can still do my alternating mills with a lot of effort. That means it's not necessarily easy. It's a good challenge, but I would never start with these. I would always, um, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't dislike them. That'll be my answer. You know, um, I like practicality. I like availability and accessibility. I like what you can do. I think if you make your own pair, if you're a crafty person like John, you made your own pair, that's good enough for me. There's a company that makes a uh, um, kind of a cool, I think it's like a Pavlov handle or something. I'm messing it up, some kind of, some handle. And it screws onto a, like a water bottle and then you can move that up. and. You can you find them on Amazon if you go to that link and then search that. They'll probably pop up anyway. But like all the way up to a, a two liter bottle. And then you just buy the handle and you can control, you put sand in there, water in there, whatever you want. And then when you wear out that water bottle, you uh, just get a new bottle, right? And what, what's a, uh, a bottle of Coke, especially after someone already drank it or Diet Coke or whatever, they're uh, everywhere. But these are nice. I like to do simple exercises here. This is really starting to get my heart rate up. I get stronger, but I'm gonna isolate. I'm only gonna do a few things with these, and then I'll go back for the last exercise I wanna show you. I'll go back to these when I'm ready to do more intricate or more complex moves, because with the heavier ones, you go really complex with the heavier ones and your body's not ready for it, you're gonna pull something because everything in there is small, right? All the muscle groups. It's not like your big chunky thighs or my big chunky thighs where I can, yeah. And I, I think it's a good company, right? Because they, they're constantly improving. The only thing is I think they get into that, um, uh, I don't know, smoking weed or whatever, Joe Rogan, which, you know, I, I don't really care one way or the other. It just dis detracts, distracts a little bit. But I made that mistake, right? I bought all these shares in Tesla, and then he went on Joe Rogan and he smoked the weed and it looked like he was losing his mind. He was having a kid with that, that singer Grimes, and I sold him all but two shares, one for each kid. I put one each kid's future, and I bought him for like 200 bucks. I don't know if you know about Tesla and how it's trading, but it's up to like $1,500, $1,500 something. Anyway, every once in a while I make a good pick. From here, you're gonna push them and turn your whole body. Now I'm gonna back up so you can see my feet. I'm just facing this way. I'm gonna turn and face this way. So go from here to here. And in fact, you can practice just pivot and pivot. 
And if you ask me, do you pivot on the ball of the foot or the heel, I'll say yes, you pivot on both. So your whole foot, it's going to shift as you pivot. So don't overthink it, but start here, drop them, and bring them to this side. Now, you're getting more of your body into it as you're starting to swing. You can start to stretch it up a little bit by straightening your elbows out. So you're here to here, and then add that twisting motion in each direction. And this is where I want you to get up to for this basic level. And it's a bunch of basic moves kind of woven together in a way that's gonna lean you out faster, get you stronger, get you faster. Let me show you one more time before I go. Uh, think of this, you know this, reverse it, right? And then drop and back, bend, two, that, and then put those two together, spin it down, and then bring it back. Down. And you don't have to squat. If you want to isolate, just make sure that you can go down, go up, and then face one direction. Let the weight of the club pull you. Start that momentum for your turn, 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 and then add that spin down and spin up. Yes, they have lots of nutrition. They also have maces, Indian clubs, um, those kettlebells with the big gorilla head. I'll bet they're sold out of just about everything, just like everybody else. Because of the COVID, everybody's buying stuff to work out at home, which is why I want to say one last time, make your own. Do like John did, do what, like I did when I started. I had a broom. I can still picture it. It was in my dad's work van when I was a kid. And I remember I used it because I always had to help clean up or I always had to clean up. <laughs> I know it helps the right term when you're doing all the work. Um, but you know, he paid me too. And I'm not complaining. I appreciate every second of that. That's uh, important. Let your kids work. Um, you don't turn them into slaves, but let them, let them earn a quarter or two. You know what I mean? Anyway, so I have this, this broom. It was blue and a lot of the paint had been chipped off from years of work and the bristles were eaten down because they'd been used so much. It was almost completely gone and it was blackened with tar because sometimes we would do driveways, right? And so um, I cut the broom off with a hacksaw and I still, I picture the whole thing, cut the broom, the, the you know, bristle part off and then I have my stick. That was my first bow staff. I used to spin that thing, spin that thing, spin that thing, do all kinds of stuff with it. And then I learned about Indian clubs and collie sticks years later, but I still had that blue broom handle with the broom cut off from when I was a kid. And I got that thing out and I didn't, I looked online, it, you know, back in the day, there was no, you couldn't buy anything other than books on Amazon, but I got online and I couldn't figure out like where to buy Indian swinging clubs that didn't cost a million dollars, plus shipping, right, with the weight. So I took those and I cut them in half and they're about this length, two skinny sticks. And I learned all the basic moves. And then I practiced, you know, and I got better and I got better and then I needed more weight. So I took the weights that were in, because I, I lived in a Taekwondo school for a long time you know, or paid my dues, lived in the school, slept on the floor. Uh, when I had my own martial arts school, li uh, washed myself in the little RV sink. That was such a small space, smaller than this. That was the only thing I had and used a little uh, washcloth or whatever. I'm not complaining either. Again, I don't regret a minute of it, but I took that uh, stick and I had these old ankle weights. We used to wear, use those ankle weights to get faster kicks, faster legs, and then harder kicks. And then we found out that putting the, the weight on the, the ankle pulled the knee too much and caused a lot of knee tears and injuries. So we stopped doing that. Then we put them on the wrists so we could do the same thing with the punches. But then they move up and down. And then later we started, you know, holding the weights. Anyway, so I took the, the weights out of these torn up, chewed up ankle weights like the old aerobics ladies would wear. And I tied them on the end of my sticks with some duct tape 
and each weight was one quarter pound. So I could control the weight. I put them in the same place. Then I had a one pound. Eventually I had a two pound pair of Indian clubs that started with a broom. That no longer could work as a broom because we used it up. And what is my point, right? The point is, you're not gonna be able to find a lot of things. You can, I think you can still find Indian clubs if you go to Amazon, but um, on the link below. Maybe, I don't know. But you don't have to buy anything. Use what you have, don't wait to start. Don't make excuses for why you can't, because so many people can do that, right? Think, think of a million reasons why you're not gonna make it. And they can think of a million reasons why they can't do something. But you only need one reason why you can, and that could be because you want to. It's as simple as that. I'm gonna do this because I want to, that's it. So then you'll find a way, you'll make a way, don't just, you just stop in your brain. You don't ever say, I can't afford it. I, it's, I don't have enough time. It's too hard. Um, all these limiting words shut your brain off. But if you say, can't do it yet, don't have enough money yet, I don't know how, but I'm gonna find a way. And then your brain goes to work and you see that broom sitting in the corner no one uses anymore. And you cut it in half, you cut the broom part off, and then you have a pair of collie sticks. You have a pair of Indian swinging clubs. And so that's my point. Don't let anybody else tell you why you can't do something. Just do it, go all in. And then as you start to do it, it's like the more you walk, the more you can walk, which means the more that those people who sit on their bum and their bum gets bigger and their heart gets unhealthier and then their body aches all the time, the less, the more they sit, the more they can't walk. The more they sit, the more they can sit. And the less they walk, the less they can walk. The more you walk, the more you can walk. So start with what you have. And then the most perfect pair of Indian swinging clubs will present themselves to you in your life somehow. I don't know where. Ask John, just out of, on a whim, I thought, I've got all this stuff. I don't want to just throw it away. I'm moving to Florida from Ohio. I'm going to give it away. I'm even going to pay for shipping, right, John? And I forget what it was. I asked him a question. He answered it. I said, hey, send me your email. Boom. I sent him a pair of free Indian clubs. Now, that doesn't mean I'm sending them to you, but you don't need them. You can make your own or get your own. I'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah. No, I love it, man. It's, it's, it's a community. We, you and I, all of us, exist in this uh, virtual dojo, this martial arts community. Whether you're training karate, taekwondo, jitsu, you want to do the Wing Chun punch, you want to learn some wushu, whatever it is, or you just simply want to know how to defend yourself. You don't want to get into the traditional uh, old style martial arts. You want to pick up a walking cane, or you want to fight with the collie sticks. You want to learn how to use a knife, right? Uh, the simple things. Maybe you want to learn how to do the concealed carry. You'd have to know how to present and all that stuff. I don't do that here because I don't want to get uh, demonetized because I'm making like $2 a month. I need that $2, right? Keep the lights on. But um, some things they don't like, right? You guys know what I'm talk talking about. But anyway, whatever it is, we all belong to the same martial arts community, the same online virtual. We're all focused in the same direction. Now, we might not agree politically. We don't need to because we have more in common than we have apart. We don't need the rest of the uh, media and the world to tell us how to think about stuff. We know this, that if we work hard and we sweat, we learn how to take a punch, how to punch and move, how to keep our bodies strong and healthy, that's all we have control over anybody, right? I can't control who's in the White House. I can't control uh, whether I have to wear a stupid mask or not. I can't control how long this thing is going to last with the Wuhan and the COVID and all that stuff. doesn't matter. If I focus on that, then I get stuck in the corner. We're going to focus on let's get healthy, let's get strong. And that's what we're doing with the Indian Swinging Club. Anyway, I'm going to uh, take a break, get a drink of water if I have time. Coming back with the bow staff because we got to do bow today. I'll see you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. It's over here. There it is on the floor. I don't know if you saw that. This is one of the most deceptive things in the gym. I love it. They call it the headache bag because it gives everybody a headache just thinking about using it. And what I do is I take down one of these other bags, one of the higher bags usually. I don't know if you can see, these are mounted a little higher. So I take this down and I hang that up and you just, you just weight the bottom of it. I weight it with a uh, uh, swinging thing, a, you know, kettlebell, right? And then boom, 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 boom. And we start to work on 
hitting this thing. Why is it so hard and why is it so important? Because when you're in a fight, you don't know what they're going to do. They're not going to just stand there and trape. They might if they don't know what they're doing. But it's dynamic. They're moving all over. And you want to learn how to hit something while it's in motion. And then, I also, it's, it's funny to me. People try this, right? I love this thing. But people hate that. They hate that and they hate the headache bag once they use it the first time. And I think the reason is no one showed them how to do it. No one told them it's supposed to not be easy. It's like this bike here. I love this bike. Have you ever seen one of these? That's got the Airdyne bike. But the way it's set up, the link between here and there, you have to sit on it, pump the legs, and your arms are like this, and you're moving in a way that your entire body is getting a workout. So it's extremely uncomfortable, and it's unpleasant, and people hate it, and they're like, oh, can you adjust the seat for me? And I say, no. And they're like, well, can we skip that today? And I say, no. And, and they're like, but it's not easy. And I said, that's why we have to do it. That's the thing that, that, that I wanna get across. So many times we think, Oh, well, is there an easier way? Is there a button I can push to make it easy? How do we make this thing smoother? It's not supposed to be smooth. When someone's coming to try to erase your life from the face of the universe and, and snuff you out for self-defense, you need to fight that fight. And that fight's not supposed to be pretty and easy and smooth. And you're not going to just, you know, Muhammad Ali float around. And blah, 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 blah. You're not going to be Conor McGregor. And, oh, you know, all this cool stuff because you have these natural talents and gifts. No, you're going to fight. You're not going to quit. You're not going to give up. You're not going to give in. You're not going to slow down because you have to keep fighting. And the fight's not over until you win. And all these things that are difficult in here. I only have things in this, bu this business, this uh, building, that are hard to do and difficult and unpleasant. I don't have any, I don't have any uh, we don't play soccer with the kiddies. We don't do um, fun, fancy, whatever, whatever, whatever. Everybody's going to sweat. Everybody's going to get some bruises now and then and not because we're tough dudes and tough girls it's because that's the only way that the fight goes down the fight's not going to be you know super simple it was that um ufc fighter the guy broke into his house because he left the garage door open closed your garage door at night and the guy walked in through the garage door and something he was on something right his brain was gone and this guy this ufc fighter who fought john bone jones was his last fight before he fought this home intruder who was just some lanky kid with no training at all. Like a lanky 19 year old kid just comes walking in, stoned off of his mind, and he starts yelling at everybody, what are you doing in my house? He was in the wrong house. He was in this MMA fighter's house. And the MMA fighter said, so by the time he said to his wife, call the cops. She calls the cops. By the time they get there, five minutes later, it takes five minutes. And they come in and it takes three cops to get this kid in the handcuffs. Take him to the car and the kid's walking out. He's like, hey, sorry, dude. It's, I guess this wasn't my house. But here's the point, the MMA fighter who fought John Bone Jones, I don't know if you know who that is, look him up, tough, tough fighter, I wouldn't fight him. I wouldn't want to, I would if I had to, but I wouldn't want to. And uh, he, he fights this guy, no training, 19 years old, just coked off his mind or whatever, and he, it takes him five minutes before the cops get there, he's still fighting. He had more uh, cuts and bruises than any fight he had, he said. He said it was the hardest fight of his life. Hardest fight of his life, and that's the point. A self-defense fight is not like a fight in the ring or a fight in a gym. You're not trading points. You're not going for a knockout. There's no one there to separate you when it gets too dangerous. You got to fight and fight and fight. So the point is, all this stuff is supposed to be hard and difficult and uncomfortable and ugly. And you're supposed to do it ugly and keep going until it gets done. And then you'll, you'll make it look smooth. And as soon as you look smooth doing something, find something else that makes you look ugly and uncomfortable and gets you out of your comfort zone because you only grow when you're out of your comfort zone. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Thanks.